Everything people think they know about the Daniel Holtzclaw case is wrong. Daniel Holtzclaw was cut from law enforcement cloth. Both parents, career cops. Describe your brother. What kind of a guy is he? He's a very um, open, a very honest person. His father's a pillar in the community. His mother is as sweet as pie. Daniel was a big boy with big ambition who nearly made it to the NFL. When that didn't happen, the badge was his destiny. What was it like to see your son graduate from the academy himself? It was a very proud moment for me. Daniel had a beautiful girlfriend to whom he often quoted the Bible. Hey, Dan, it's Chris Hansen. How are you? In my own conversation with Daniel, he made an impassioned plea. What's the single biggest thing you can tell people that in your mind proves your innocence? All I've ever wanted from day one is just please lay out the facts. Lay out the facts and take it from there. That's all I want. And now for the first time, Crime Watch Daily breaks down the defense team's case, which it says proves Daniel Holtzclaw deserves a new trial. I'm not going to allow Daniel Holtzclaw to become the poster child for, for cops who have gone bad. We want life! How many women does it take? This is a textbook case of grave miscarriages of justice. They've got to fight this battle in two courts the courtroom of law and the courtroom of public opinion. The police chief announced it was the worst case of abuse of authority he'd seen. The investigation isn't even complete, and people say, oh, well, he must have been guilty. In the beginning, there were 21 accusers, including one man, but cops dropped eight, including Shanice Barksdale, who was even prosecuted for lying. You were probably getting ready to have to say you're sorry to a whole lot of women. The prosecution had no corroborating witnesses and not a single piece of direct evidence. The defense says Holtzclaw showed he had nothing to hide in his interrogation. You got any questions about this? <laughs> oh my God, bless. I want to do that, I want everything, I want to get it done. He's like, take my clothes, take my computer, take my phone, give me a lie detector. The defense challenged the many accusers who said Holtzclaw's genitals suddenly appeared, even though he wore compression underwear with no opening. Anyone with any common sense knows that you're just not going to be hanging there when you're wearing compression shorts that have no front on it. It takes several minutes for him to untangle all of the suspenders and the extenders. The defense argues that detectives stuck with a weak case went on a witch hunt. They went out and found women that he had stopped and said, oh, by the way, we have a bad police officer that we're looking at and that we need your help. He's a pretty bad guy. He's having women do different things. We'll take care of these warrants and we'll take care of uh, issues that you have. But if you work with us, did this officer sexually assault you? Take the case of Carla Raines, who accused Holtzclaw of making her expose her breasts. In this police audio interview provided by a former member of the defense team, she first denies it multiple times. Have you ever come to any contact where an officer has been inappropriate? No. You ever had to expose yourself to him? No. But you, you wasn't asked if you had any drugs on you, anything like that, and you had to... Expose myself. Mm -hmm. Within the past year, I really can't really recall. Mm-mm. Because I don't be on the streets no more. How did you get my name anyway on something like this? After seven denials, Carla Raines changed her tune. So I had to raise my shirt up, raise my bra up, and shake it out. Then Raines says this. Oh, I helped you, but You did. You did. And when asked to describe Holtzclaw. I know he had light brown skin, like a Mexican. Oh, late 30s. Holtzclaw is half white, half Japanese, and was 27 at the time. Shardarian Hill accused Holtzclaw of rape. Listen to what she said to Detective Gregory when the police interview was over, but the camera was still rolling. So this is good evidence? Well, you tell me. I think so, because, I mean, y'all... Even if, like, even if he didn't, like, even write nobody. I think there couldn't be a clearer example of how coached these women were and how they were playing a game with these detectives. 
Sherry Ellis accuses Holtzclaw of forced oral sex and vaginal rape. But here's how she describes Holtzclaw. Tell me your description of him. He's black. He's OK. Black male. How tall could you tell? 5'11". Tabitha Barnes claims Holtzclaw touched her inappropriately and stalked her. And incredibly, Barnes was permitted by the judge to testify under the influence of drugs. She comes back positive for PCP. She would be asked very specific questions, and her answer would be, I'll take a pass on that one. I'll take a pass. Janie Liggins claims Holtzclaw had his hands on top of his patrol car while she performed oral sex, and that her hands were on top of the car while he patted her down. Holtzclaw's defense insists her story doesn't add up with this. There were no fingerprints of Holtzclaw's or Liggins found on the car. Liggins told police Holtzclaw had blonde hair, was 5'7 to 5'9, and did not have a smooth face. Liggins' sex assault test showed no DNA. But one question looms. Remember, Daniel was on his way home that night and had turned off his computer and GPS. You did violate policy and procedure that night. Yeah, absolutely. It was something that I was just tired. Uh, I got complacent. Felt like it was going to be a quick traffic stop. Did you sexually assault that woman? Absolutely not. I did not. I am not guilty of any of these crimes. Coming up, prosecutors link DNA to a young accuser. But there's a problem. What did your daughter tell you? She said, I met this really hot cop. 